After collecting mussels from your stream, you can bring them back to your gathering point to sort them out into light groups on a table or gravel bar. You don't have to know what they are quite yet, but sort them into groups that look alike. Um, one of the first groups you can usually take out is the giant floater. You should have big teeth, but not a giant floater. Yes. And so another giveaway for the giant floater is the double loops on the umbo. Got it. Right there. How did it taste? That one is, is not, not double looped, and so that's different. Even though it's a uh, so a cylindrical paper shell and giant floater look very similar. Here's the difference. A giant floater has an M shape on its umbo ridges. A cylindrical paper shell just has plain old concentric ridges. And then it's called a cylindrical paper shell because it's almost narrow enough to where you could roll it like a cylinder, just like that. Whereas a giant floater, it takes a little bit more to tip it because it's wider. It has a wider proportion. And giant floaters are going to get way bigger than cylindrical paper shells. So do the paper shells have teeth at all? No, not really. Okay. That's that's where they're similar. Yeah. They, and even the nakers. Yes, the similar maker. It's the you want to look at the umbo and you want to look at the shape. The shape. This is a, a narrower shell, this is a wider okay. shell. Okay. So giant floaters, we're gonna put in a row just like this. Cylindrical paper shells, we're gonna put in a row just like this. Fat muckets, we're gonna put in a row just like this. Now, I'll stand here by the rows, and if you're not sure, just ask, but these will be where they go. Riverwatch requires volunteers to measure the maximum length and width of live or recent dead mussels for the Riverwatch monitoring program. Now, relic mussels do not have to be measured, only live condition and recent dead mussels. So what you want to do is get the maximum length in millimeters. Length is the longest side, so from side to side like this, and then width goes across like this, so it would be the shorter side. So when measuring length, you place the muscle, the live or recent dead muscle, on top of your ruler, and you match it up at the end, and then you see where it, how far it goes down, and this one we'd call 132 millimeters. And so we've got that we'd record that for our length, and then when we, we would rotate it around to get the the maximum width that we could get. Now this one is a pink paper shell, so it has a wing on it, so that actually adds to our maximum width. So the width here would be 90 millimeters. So we record 90 millimeters for our width. The species, shell condition, and length and widths can be recorded on the data sheet as you identify them and measure them. You can see here a completed muscle collection data sheet where the species lifted, listed in the left column with the condition as live and recent dead um, even some relics listed in the middle column. And then you have your maximum length in millimeters and maximum width in millimeters. All of these um, collection sheets will be added together at the end to make your final counts on your final tally sheet.